The Nile, the longest river in the world, a lifeline for over 250 million people. But today it's more than just a river, it's a fault line between development and survival. And at the center of this story is a dam, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD for short. It's Africa's biggest hydropower project and one of its most controversial. In Ethiopia, the GERD is a symbol of hope, of self-reliance, of defiance. This isn't a World Bank project or handouts from a foreign country. No, this was built by Ethiopians themselves through local bonds, salary reductions, pure nationalistic determination. Because nearly 60 million Ethiopians live without electricity and this project could change all of it. It's expected to double the country's power output, enough to light homes, run factories, and export electricity to neighboring countries like Sudan and Kenya. For Ethiopia, the GERD is more than just an infrastructure project. It's literally liberation. But downstream in Egypt, the story changes. Because for Egyptians, the Nile is more than just a river, it's survival. 95% of Egyptians' population relies on the River Nile. And with one of the world's lowest water per capita shares, any disruption could be a great concern. Egypt's rights to the water in the River Nile date back to some treaties signed in 1929 and 1959. These treaties were signed under colonial rule. The treaties awarded fresh water to Egypt and Sudan, completely excluding Ethiopia. And of those two countries, Egypt got the majority share. So when Ethiopia decided to build the GERD across the Blue Nile, which provides most of the water to the Nile downstream, you can see why Egypt saw it as a threat. Then there's Sudan, which is stuck in the middle, quite literally. Its position on this topic has shifted over time. At first, it sided with Egypt, but it also saw the GERD's benefits, flood control, electricity stability, and a potential boost to its own infrastructure. See, Sudan relies on two major dams, and both depend on the seasonal flow of the Blue Nile. And the benefit of the GERD is it could help regulate that flow, because the Blue Nile is known for torrents of water during flooding seasons. This makes it more predictable, more consistent, and just better for electricity generation. But Sudan stipulates that they need clear coordination. Any rapid filling in the GERD could mean less water in their portion of the Nile, causing major issues. More than a decade of negotiations have gone nowhere. The core disagreements? Ethiopia wants flexibility. Egypt and Sudan want legally binding contracts. Egypt wants the United Nations involved. Ethiopia says African problems need African solutions. And while diplomats argue, Ethiopia continues to fill its dam. Each year, a little bit more water, a little bit more tension. Could Ethiopia weaponize water? Technically, yes, but doing so would reduce its own electricity generation, which is a primary reason for the dam. But still, Egypt and Sudan face real consequences. Loss of nutrient-rich silts that come with the river, a greater dependence on fertilizers, shrinking farmlands, and rising costs. This isn't just about water, it's also about power. If you enjoyed this video on Earth Explained, like, comment, share, follow, and I'll see you in the next one.